You're listening to The Crunch with Cam Slater. Right here on RCR, Reality Check Radio. On the line with me now is Matt King to discuss the results of the poll. Matt, we've had a lot of good feedback about the interview. I think you've picked up a lot of support out there in Reality Check Radio land um, from the interview that we had last week. But now it is time for the reality check. We've got the results of our first poll in Northland, exclusive to Reality Check Radio. And um, welcome to The Crunch. You know, Cam, thanks for uh, having me on. Appreciate it very much. Anytime, Matt. It's a pleasure to talk to you last week, and uh, it's a pleasure to talk to you again this week. Now, we've had the poll results uh, come in. Uh, basically, 38% of those polled have said that they're going to vote for uh, Grant McCullum, the National Party candidate. 18% say they're going to vote for Willow Jean Prime, the Labour Party uh, sitting MP. Uh, 6% are saying they're going to vote for Shane Jones, 3% for Mark Cameron, and 2% for you. Have you got some comment on those numbers? Yeah, Cam, that doesn't ring with what I'm getting around the, the electorate. I've, been, I've had about 14 meetings around Northland. Um, every one of them has been nearly a full house, massive feedback, great volunteers. I mean, last night we had a meeting in Wanganui. It was uh, probably 70, 70 to 80 people there, um, so hardly any any uh, free cheers. And uh, feedback's been really positive, so that, that really surprises me. I well, know it's, that – It's just yeah. a stake in the ground, I guess. We, you know, Nobody's done a poll there before, so that's why we thought we'd do a poll – to put a stake in the ground, and now we can measure progress for the uh, eighty-one day, eighty odd days that are left in the campaign. Uh, and, you know, you, you said last week that you were knocking on a lot of doors. Um, it looks like you need to knock on a lot more. Look, uh, yeah, I, I get that. I, I mean, what I've got to try and get past is that that the uh, the major parties are, are got, have got all their people out there saying um, that it's a wasted vote, or, or, or we're splitting the vote, and we'll let Labor back in and. And that's, um, you know, 30 years of MMP, people are still thinking with uh, first-past-the-post thinking. Um, That's a good point. It's a really good point you raised, but you've now got um, an empirical poll, um, you know, that you can point to people and say, well, actually, we're not splitting the vote here. There isn't any vote splitting. I mean, the the, the poll showed that there was 30% uncommitted, that they were unsure of who they would vote for as their candidate. Now, that's a lot of votes that are up for grabs, but you need to grab all of those in order to to get past Grant McCullum. Or Grant McCullum has, uh, you know, uh, an embarrassing news story or something goes wrong in Northland with Christopher Luxon and, and something happens there. But there's still 30% of respondents in this poll were saying we don't know. And we're we're what is it, we eleven weeks out from the election. Yeah, well, um, what we've got too is that when I when I talk to people and I explain the situation where, you know, in Northland they can party vote for who the party they want, and yeah. they can yeah. candidate vote for the candidate they want, and that if they party vote for the party that they want, which is um, trying to get Labour out, which everyone's really scared about um, Labour getting back in, they can. There's no downside or no risk to to candidate voting myself. Um, because there's, I'm more likely to bring some of the um, some of the undecided vote from around the country in as as um, as list MPs with me and make up the balance of power. So and get a, and ensure that we get this government out. So I've been going around um, everywhere I can and as much as I can, uh, passing that message on to people. And every conversation I have where I talk to them about that, and it's you know it is hard going because you've got it's so around so many people. Um, they understand that they rec- recognise that it's a strategic vote in Northland. Um, as I described last time, Cam, it's not a red blue horse race. So uh, that's that's where I'm at, and I've obviously got a massive job ahead of me. But um, that, that's what that's my job. I've got to do for the next eighty odd days. But you always knew that you had a massive job ahead of you, and that that this electorate uh, gives you an opportunity. Um, but what our poll also shows, because we also polled for name recognition, is that pretty much the electorate. I, I know this disagrees with your anecdotal evidence on the ground, but we've got the hard evidence here that pretty much all of the candidates, including Willow Jean Prime, the uh, sitting Labour MP, 
uh, have got a majority of people not knowing or recognizing who their name is. And uh, that's that's the biggest challenge, to get your name out there. That, hey, Matt King is standing again and, um, and vote for me. Yeah, well, we don't get any um, – we've had zero mainstream media coverage Actual fact, um, we've you know been on reality check a couple of times, a couple of times on a couple of other um, non-mainstream news, but we don't have the um, we don't get the coverage that the, some of the other parties get, whether on mainstream media all the time. So yeah, we've, I mean that's the, that's the challenge of, of a minor party starting up is to actually get across, get your message out. And what I say to people is, and we've got eighty days to do this, is and we'll be going hard out is mm. to let them know that when, when they're actually thinking about who they're going to vote for and the way they're going to vote, there is a strategic vote there that they can do where, where there's no downside. And for me, I, I guess we'll be advertising, we'll be uh, pushing out social media, we'll be doing it at all the meet the candidates and every bit of publicity we can, I will be saying to people, hey, there's no downside to giving me your electric vote. There's absolutely none. And, and, and if I can get that message out to enough of these people and enough of these undecideds and a few of the people that, that are staunch nats, that they can recognise that um, that, that, that there is no there is no downside, then then I've got a chance. And I'm I was at a farmers meeting today, uh, a DNZ lunch luncheon, and and I was talking to the average cow copies there. There was a few of them, and I was asking them what, what they thought. And they this this first thing was, yeah, Matt, we, we really like you. We liked you as the MP, and we'd like to have you again, but we don't want to risk Labor getting back in. And when I explained the, the strategy behind it, they all all understood straight away, and they said, oh, you wouldn't get that, yeah. We've got two votes. We can vote strategically, and we can ensure the the, the uh, Labor government are kept out for a decade. That's um, what so I find just... astonishing. That after thirty years of MMP, people still don't understand that. And except in rare electorates like Northland or Epsom or places like that, it really doesn't matter who you vote for for your electorate MP. So you may as well have an insurance policy. But it's the party vote that's critical for everybody. Um, but a small party is able to drag in a couple of extra MPs if they can win an electorate seat. And that's why I always say the two questions I ask minor party leaders, what are your, what are your plans to win an electorate seat and what are your plans to win 150,000 votes? And yeah. you, you clearly answered those questions last week, which, mm. which was good. Um, but the focus now has to be on you need to get out there and and – and really rattle some cages in the local electorate uh, and and get across the line there. And if there's an upset, I'd be very pleased for you to, to see that happen. Yeah, well, we had a poll um, when I was running in 20, 2020, and that showed me oodles ahead of, of the Labour candidate when I was, you know, I was running as a national candidate, like 20% ahead, I think, and um, safe margin anyway. And on the day, everything changed. And, no, 2020 uh, was 2020 was you, it was there's nobody predicted that result. There's no way no. that it look like that. No. So I'm I'm encouraged by that. I'm encouraged by the number of undecideds. I'm also I mean for me I talk to a lot of people around there. Uh, that even though we've had NMP for thirty odd years, people still think first past the post. And you can, that's the thing that you've got to try and break through with people and say, hey, you can be strategic here because you imagine a scenario where they two tick the national candidate, right? And they get to the election and they're they're sitting at 59, them and ACT are looking at 59 seats and they need 61. Well, actually, you need 62 or 63 to be safe. And and I go to national voters, I say, well, you know, if, you, if you'd given me the candidate tick, my, I might have bought those two or three in and we would have guaranteed and assured a change of government. Mm. Um, and when I say that, people, they, they do. But you know what? Because I can't get on mainstream media and talk like that, I, I have to do it, um, you know, person by person, room by room. And so um, we've got a pretty pretty good campaign, and it will be concentrating on strategic voting, and um, more so than actually selling our policy. We'll be talking about how you can ensure that we have a change of government by by strategic voting. Northerners will decide that. So, yeah, your your poll tells me I've got a hell of a lot of work to do, but um, you know I'm not going to I'm not going to lay down. I'm going to go hard. Um, that's what so, I've done. So yeah. Matt King's not shying away from the challenge. No, not at all. And you know what? Everyone wrote me off when I was up against Winston Peters. Everyone, um, yeah, exactly the same feeling. Actually, there was a there was a basically a vibe amongst people as you don't have a hell shit show in hell of winning against Winston and and um, 
I was I was just doing the work on the ground quietly as, as much as I could and, and beavering away, and I did that for a long time. I was quite confident that I'd, I'd done enough to get across. And when I had the result came through and I won by 1,500, I actually felt disappointed because I thought that I was going to get more. And and so I look at this and I go, okay, you've, you've done a poll. It, it is a stake in the ground. Um, and and, and it, it indicates to me that I've got a lot of work to do to try and get that um, that strategic folk message out there and, and we'll be focusing on it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, as I said, it is a stake in the ground. We needed to measure that. Um, that then allows allows you to reinforce that message. See, we can actually make a difference here. But mm. um, it is a steep uh, mountain that you've got to climb. But you knew that when you left the National Party and went out on your own. You knew you'd have the, the the forces of the elites against you. Yeah, well, Cam, I what I did was, I mean, I could have I could have been um, if I'd been unprincipled, I could have just sat on and in, in the blue in the blue uniform and 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 rode rode right you know rode the chariot through onto the next election. And I, but I know in my own self, my principles were um, challenged by this whole thing. And I, regardless of the outcome of this election, I did the right thing, and and I can sleep well at night. I. I felt so strongly when the mandates came out that I have to do something for my family, for my community, for my country. And that's why I went out on this, um, you know, what we've started and the created a party. And, um, you know, regardless of the outcome, I'm, I'm very happy with the decision I made and I sleep well at night and I'll look back on these times and go, um, you know, I, I'm on the right side of history and I'm very comfortable with that. So, yeah, hey, look, this is, this is, this is a, not a good poll result, but I'll tell you what, We've got 80 days to go, so I'd love to be talking to you at the election and say you you be congratulating me from from coming from behind and 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 pulling off the win of the century. So, well, look, I'd like nothing better than to talk to you the day after the election and that you're the new MP for Northland, and there'd be a whole lot of people out there um, who will be cheering you on. And um, you know, I've been critical of you in the past, but one thing I can't criticise you for is the heart that you're showing in the campaign and. And the fight that you're taking uh, to the campaign, and uh, you know that's all that we can ask of people who put their name forward for public office that they do their best and they do as much as they can uh, to try and get elected. And it's it's a really hard job standing for parliament. It's a really hard job standing for public office. Mm. And um, people don't. I don't think people understand just how hard it is. Uh, and then when you see raw numbers like this, it can be disheartening. But the ones that succeed are the ones that pick themselves up and and carry on and press on regardless. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best in the campaign and no doubt we'll talk several times more before the election. Hey, I, I, um, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about the new Cam Slater, this um, being nice to me. It's like, uh, it's really, it's kind of a little bit unnerving. <laughs> But yeah, I appreciate I've, it too, Cam. I, I I've, I've it had too. a few comments from uh, mates saying, "Who's this? Who's this Cam? Well, what happened to old Cam?" I said, "Well, old Cam's dead. Uh, yeah. Old Cam died uh, when I had a stroke, and this is new Cam. And this is the, really the first outing that people have, are seeing now. The new Cam. And so, thank you very much for that comment. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, Thanks, you know, Cam. I, okay, yeah. mate. Thank you very much, Matt, and all the best for the election campaign. We'll talk again. You're a good man. Thanks, Cam. Appreciate okay. it. No worries. See ya. This is The Crunch with Cam Slater. Conversations with a side of controversy right here on RCR.